This is the review for the SOLIDWORKS 2016 in introductory class midterm exam. To find the midterm exam, just go to vertanu1.com, go to the exams, and pull up the SOLIDWORKS Basics midterm. Uh, at, once you open it, you can see here that there's uh, four basic steps. First is to model a bottle that's given to you, as well as the second step is to model a cap and then create the bottle assembly and attach the two and then recreate the medicine bottle, bottle assembly drawing which is really this image right here actually you can see all the drawings necessary for completing it and this drawing you want to recreate so let's begin first of all the bottle is a very simple design uh, again this is just like almost a widget bottle just to get the concepts down so as you can see it's a two inch diameter two and a half inches in height half inch diameter of uh, height neck and the diameter is 1.5 and it's shelled out at uh, 100 thousandths and it has radiuses of 100 thousandths so let's begin start off with a new part file and I would suggest drawing this on the top plane as the bottle sits on the table top, it's going to sit on here. So we'll draw the base of the bottle, which is a two inch diameter circle, and just smart dimension that at two inches. Go to features and extrude that, and you want that to extrude a height of two and a half inches, so 2.5, and hit enter, zoom out. Now select the top surface of the bottle and start a sketch and we're going to draw the neck of the bottle locking into the origin and that diameter needs to be one and a half inches and then that gets extruded 0.5 now you could go to the fillet tool first I would recommend the fillet, fillet tool first because if you shell before the fillets there you don't get the same inside radius that you would normally get so um, it's always good, especially in this case, to fill it at first, then shell it at the end. So now going to the shell command, and that was a 0.1 fillet on this face and this edge. Now go to the shell command and make sure it's set to 0.1 and select this top surface here. That's the surface that needs to be removed and hit apply. If you get an error message when you shell it take a look at the feature tree if there's two shells shell one and shell two that means that you accidentally activated the shell command and hit enter too quickly you didn't remove the top and then when you went to try and remove it with the second shell it failed to shell so just be aware that could happen just delete the second shell or delete both shells and just start over or hit undo a couple times all right and that is the bottle so i'm going to go ahead and save that as the B1 for bottle and now I'm gonna to go to make the cap so I'm gonna select part file start a new part file and again the top plane is a good place to start draw out the diameter the largest diameter that appears on the print is 1.9 and then extrude that and it's only an extrusion depth of 0.1 while you're in this isometric mode do not rotate it just go right to fill it otherwise you might fill it the wrong surface go ahead and select this top edge and hit enter rotate it around the underside and now you can select the underside and start a sketch take the circle tool do not try and take a shortcut and draw both diameters in for the where the neck would fit in to this because if you do that they're different depths and you will get marked off for it this is needs to be 1.8 inches in diameter and extrude this a half inch. Now you could go ahead and put the hole in it. Do not shell. Again, don't try and take shortcuts uh, unless you really know what you're doing. Just from experience of grading these tests, you want to uh, draw the diameter in here on the center, one and a half inches, and that gets extruded only 0.4. And you can see that on the drawing by subtraction. So if you look at the drawing here, and we're looking at the cap, you're looking at this depth right here, 0.5, and then see it goes a little lower, it's 0.1, so it's 0.5 minus 0.1 equals 0.4, so don't make that mistake either, making it the same depth. Now I'll go ahead and select this face and start a sketch, and we're going to draw in one of the ribs. And so the ribs are nothing more than a diameter 
locked into, you could lock it right up here at the quadrant and snap it to tangent to this edge. Go ahead and go to smart dimension and just dimension that at point 0.1 and then hit escape. Now remember it's blue so after you hit escape hold control and select both centers, the center of the model and the center of that little diameter you just drew and make a, a vertical or horizontal relationship. In this case I want vertical and it just locks it in, fully defines it. Now if we rotate you'll see there it is. Go to features and extruded boss base. It's going to go in the wrong direction, that's okay. Just hit the reverse switch and select up to next. Hit the green check mark. Now if I hit escape a couple times I could now go to the little underneath linear pattern, find circular pattern. The features and faces would be this right here. So it's the boss extrude feature. Now click in this little area here for the pattern axis. The pattern axis could be this outside diameter, the inside diameter. The only one that really doesn't work is this uh, radial surface with the blend on it. So stay away from that. Go ahead and just select this surface. And then you're going to select equal spacing. Should default to 360 degrees. And bump this up to 50. And you could either just bump that up or type in the explicit value and hit enter. And there is your circular pattern. Go ahead and save this and I'm going to save it as C1 for cap 1. And now we can move on to the next part. The third part of this midterm is the assembly. Go ahead and select assembly and hit OK. And you'll see the B1 for the bottle and the C1 for the cap. Let's drop the bottle in first. Hit the select B1 and if you just hit the green check mark it will drop the bottle in to the origin in the center of the assembly which is perfect that's it's gonna work great if you do that now you could go to insert components up here and select the C1 which is the cap drop zoom out and drop the cap way up above if you drop it down here sometimes when you start adding mates it ends up in the bottle and it, I've seen students go through a panic attack during the midterm and they don't realize it's just inside the bottle. You just have to pull it out. You could grab it and drag it out if you want to. But anyhow, um, let's go to the mate tool, the paper clip that's up here, and select this surface here, and then this surface right here. And it will align. Hit the green check mark. Now do not select this surface. If you select that surface, it will intersect and contact surfaces. You'll get marked off significantly for that. You want the underside inside the cap and then select the top of the neck of the bottle and hit the green check mark. Now you need to explode it so use the exploded view, click on the cap and use the manipulator handles to drag it so the Y direction will drag it up and you could drag it up about two inches just so it clears the bottle. Okay, Hit the green check and now to collapse it, and I would recommend you collapse it, right click on the top of the feature tree and you'll find collapse. Notice there is an animate collapse, we don't need that right now, that's fancy stuff, but we will get to that later in other classes. Okay, now at this point, just make sure you save the assembly and we'll call it A1 for the assembly. Now go to file and you'll find make drawing from assembly. If this is not checked, go ahead and check it or uncheck it to make sure you get the ANSI standard templates. You need to be in the A ANSI landscape. Hit OK. You'll see on the right hand side your view palette should have appeared. If not, hit this little button. It might be truncated to the right. Grab your front view, drag it in. Move your pointer up top and it will automatically unfold the top view. If you drag it down, it will unfold the bottom view. Actually, we wanted the bottom view, so click on the bottom. Now hit, uh, hit escape. To delete a view you just select the border of whichever view you don't want and hit delete on your keyboard. Now you could go ahead and drag this up. Let's move it up a little bit higher. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and bring in another view. Hit this little tab here and find the isometric exploded. If the isometric exploded is not there, that most likely indicates that you never exploded it. So just be aware, 
you, and, and you cannot explode it here. You actually have to go back to, you could go up here to the window and find the A1, which was the assembly, go back in there, explode it, save it, come back here, and it should appear then inside there. After you hit, uh, it, you might have to hit the regenerate button up here, or refresh, and then it'll appear. Okay, now we want to transform these to um, something a little bit uh, less defined, like these object lines are just too thickened. And so I'm just going to control select the four view borders and then right click and you'll find tangent edge and select with font because that's how it is on the print. If it doesn't match the print, you get marked off for it. Okay, now in this case, um, we want to go ahead and bring in a center mark. So go ahead and select center mark, click on the outer edge and you should see a center mark appear on the bottom of the bottle. Let's make a section view. Go to view layout, go to section view, and you'll see here mine is a horizontal right now, but change it to vertical and snap it to center, click, hit the green check, and auto hatching should be turned on, otherwise the hatch pattern will match for both the bottle and cap, and you will get marked off for it, so make sure auto hatching, hit OK, and drag it to the right. If your arrows appear differently, like if they don't seem like the arrows are pointing out and they're pointing into the thing, there could be two things. You could double click on this to reverse it, hit rebuild when you're done, or you're, you might be in the ISO standard versus the ANSI standard, and that's in the tools, options, document properties, and make sure it's set to the ANSI standard. Okay, now we're going to make a detail view. Click on the detail view. In this vicinity here, hover your pointer and click inside there. Click again and drag out the next view. You can see in this case it needs to match the print. In order to match the print, you need to go over here, select per standard. Instead of per standard, go with leader and drag the leader out. Now we're ready to actually add the balloons and the bill material. So that's under annotate. Go to uh, select this view, just click on the border. Go to Tables, and you'll see either Excel-based bill materials or bill materials. It's a good idea, just from experience, save right now before you do this. Sometimes the bill of materials, I've seen it crash in the past. Not saying it's going to do it now, but it's um, not a bad idea just to save, just in the event that something happens. Especially Excel-based, because it's transitioning between Windows, um, Excel, or I should say Microsoft Excel, to SOLIDWORKS, which is integrated, and it can cause some issues some, from time to time, but usually you're in good shape. Go ahead and just select Bill of Materials for this one. I use the standard BOM, hit the green check mark, and just drop it up top left. Now we could go ahead and add the details on here, uh, the balloons. So go to Auto Balloon, or you could manually do it. I'll just manually do it. Select an edge, click to drop it, select an edge, click to drop it. If you drop a balloon on the actual, like you can move these points, ANSI standard dictates it turns to a dot. So that's perfectly fine if you want to have it on it. Just I don't want to see this type of stuff. Sloppy drawings get marked off. Okay, now make sure you have your name. Go to the note tool and in this little region here, click and type in your name. Full name preferred. Do not put your initials in. And at that point, you could just verify that all everything matches up with the print that is provided in the test, which probably needs to be updated a little bit. One thing um, I know on the print, it actually shows it in first angle versus third angle. So it's flipped a little bit, but for the most part, it should look like this. And it also in this region, if you get a little crossover that's perfectly okay it just means that you rotated the cap a little differently than I did when you inserted it and that concludes the test just go to file and print out a copy of it